So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel, man. Salute. Now listen, we back with some more conspiracy theories and unexplained mysteries, but now everybody is on the wave. Y'all see that, right? Everywhere. I went, uh, uh, got my hair cut today. My barber was talking about it. Like you see people in the grocery, everybody, ever since that thing took place in Vegas, Everybody is talking about it. I love it. I'm loving every bit of it, right? So we're going to get into the next video, man, and check out some more conspiracies. And if you new, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, man. Don't forget, hit that like button so these videos can get out there to the masses, bro. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Hit that like button. Let's check this next conspiracy out. Here we go. UFOs exist. The U.S. government found quite a number of them. Numerous alien races and intergalactic wars have been introduced to our galaxy by science fiction. However, we have not encountered even the most primitive alien life form, let alone one with advanced technology, in the real world. Why is that so? One theory holds that habitable planets are few and far between, and that intelligent life is an oddity. It's also possible that more technologically advanced societies exist, but they're too far away for us to ever make contact with them. But what if extraterrestrial life is prevalent throughout the galaxy and we've been kept out of the neighborhood party on purpose? What is the Pentagon trying to conceal from us? Is anything wrong or are we- See, stuff like that makes me think like, what if we do reach them and it's not negative and we do like figure out answers to questions that we've been having for so long? That would be bad on higher certain higher ups, wouldn't it? Certain agencies, wouldn't it? For us to figure out, hey man, we've been looking at this thing all wrong. And then, then them to turn around and say, here's the answers to these questions you had about life or humanity or different things. And here's this and here's the answers to this. Like I always say, control. What is the Pentagon trying to conceal from us? Is anything wrong or are we really the only ones in the universe? Let's find out. It would appear that several unidentified anomalous phenomena, UAP sightings, have been reported over the past few years. The public at large simply doesn't know too much about them. The government has categorically denied any reports of UFOs or flying saucers in our skies for decades. Not until very recently, though. Okay, so what shifted? The United States government established the Secret Aerospace Threat Identification Program in the Pentagon in 2007. The program's goal was to compile and analyze data on UFO sightings reported to the Defense Department by service members over the years. Luis Elizondo, who had managed military operations for 20 years, joined the endeavor in 2008. He was chosen to head the program in 2010 and honed its emphasis on national security. He received reports of UAP sightings and investigated them thoroughly. One obscure report about a bizarre tic-tac-shaped object above the Pacific Ocean made by two retired U.S. military personnel drew his attention, Navy aviators. The Nimitz Carrier Strike Group was conducting training exercises with Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Alex Dietrich. Radar from a ship that was a member of the training group had discovered multiple anomalous aerial vehicles on the horizon that were falling 80,000 feet in less than a second. With a weapon system officer in the back seat of each aircraft, Fravor and Dietrich were dispatched to investigate in separate planes. As they got closer, they could make out a churning pool of water roughly the size of a Boeing 737. So basically, what they're basically saying without saying, more, some, some of our answers lie in those pilots, bro. Or just confirmations of what we think we're seeing from the ground in the sky. The things we think we're seeing, we got to figure out a way to talk to these pilots, man. And that's easier said than done because they probably sign all kind of different things that prohib prohibit them from talking about classified documents and different things, classified incidents and situations. So we got to figure out that, you know, we need a good lawyer to be able to get us through a lot of that red tape, man, and talk to them. I'm telling you, that'll start to to get us somewhere, at least in the beginning stages. 
The tic-tac-shaped object was hovering above it, according to Dietrich, and it was making no predictable movement, no predictable trajectory. There were no logos, wings, or smoke trails on the mysterious craft. Fravor came in for a closer look, but the thing took off at such a high... I don't totally... I don't disregard that either. That could be the case. Enemy spy planes could be the case, which would be scary at the same time because that means they got some technology that's way more advanced than we have. True. Another thing is at those speeds, that could be also why we haven't seen them. They could be located so far away, but their spacecrafts are so fast. They can get to those distances in no time. We can't. You know what I'm saying? So those are the two things I'm hearing with what he's saying right now. Suspicion if they are spotted flying freely in limited airspace because they may pose a threat if they so choose. Elizondo argues that a whole of government approach that is collaborative and transparent is necessary to properly interpret and share observational data with the public. Does the United States government still monitor UAPs? Elizondo continued looking into UAP sightings after funding for AATIP ran out in 2012, but he gave up in 2017 after growing weary of the Pentagon's skepticism. But before he left, he declassified three Dangerous Navy job. UAP films, and after that, he began to spread the news. The declassified tapes were supplied with the New York Times by Christopher Mellon, a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence under Presidents Bill Clinton and George W. Bush, who is now a civilian. To convince the Defense Department to treat this national security issue seriously, he said that he had to take this action. The public outcry resulted in Congress taking notice and the Pentagon finally admitting that Aerospace Threat Identification Program existed. The program was then revived by the Pentagon under the new moniker UAP Task Force. The military has authorized its personnel to report UAP sightings. Florida Senator Marco Rubio, who was then leader of the Intelligence Committee, requested a declassified report on UAP sightings from the Department of Defense and the Director of National Intelligence by June 2021. The remaining opposition to transparency, according to Elizondo, is limited to a very small cadre of people whose hold over the secret is rapidly eroding. Fortunately, both Congress and the DOD are prepared to treat this issue seriously. It's become and a that's why I say like things like Vegas, it's made, like he said, they're holding on to it as hard as they can, but they're losing their grip. With the stuff happening in Vegas, more and more people are on the side of asking more questions and starting to believe that there's something else out there. They're not going to be able to hold on to this stuff for long. I, at least I don't think they're doing they've been doing a good job, but it's too many people on the other side of the fence now liability for the Pentagon to further a cover-up of these facts because there is enough outrage from our service members and the general public and we must take that seriously. Yep. What is going to be reported? In order to deliver a thorough report, it will be necessary to sift through copious amounts of information, including but not limited to data, videos, photographs, telemetry, signatures collected, and an entire electromagnetic spectrum analysis. The National Archives and Records Administration houses numerous collections of documents related to UFOs or flying disks, which have been extensively researched and analyzed over the years in search of any additional evidence of extraterrestrial life. Records from the United States Air Force USAF, that have been retired and declassified are included in the Project Blue Book papers held by the National Archives. The United States Air Force conducted these studies between 1947 and 1969. 12,618 sightings in total were recorded to Project Blue Book during this time, according to a U.S. Air Force fact sheet. The project, which had its headquarters at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, was officially terminated in 1969, with 701 of those remaining unidentified. Can UFOs be proven through these records? So that's for all you people who just say, oh, that, there's just drones. No, they went through and sifted through and figured out which ones were drones. They were able to identify those. Now we have some that they just don't know what it is. Now, could it be enemy stuff? It could be. But 700 and something? 101 of those remaining unidentified. Can UFOs be proven through these records? 
other records have surfaced throughout time as records at the National Archives have been handled and cataloged. Michael Rhodes, an archival worker, was sorting through hundreds of boxes of Air Force records just a few years ago when he noticed a doodle in the corner of a test flight report page. The drawing drew his eye because of its uncanny resemblance to the flying saucers in popular science fiction films produced at the time, Rhodes claimed in the National Archives Pieces of History blog post Flying Saucers, Popular Mechanics, and the National Archives on July 8, 2013. The crew of Japan Airlines Flight 1628 sighted a UFO while flying over Alaska, according to a number of data from the Federal Aviation Administration that are available online at the National Archives simulated radar images, and a report on the incident that ran in the Philadelphia Inquirer magazine on May 24, 1987, are both available in the National Archives. The online catalog for this collection's records includes notes taken during interviews with the three crew members who saw the UFO. According to Marie Brindo Voss, a metadata technician at the National Archives in Seattle, Washington, the papers were found as part of the Alaskan digitization effort. The Army's inquiry into flying disks is covered in a film of Major General John A. Samford's statement on flying saucers from the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. on July 31, 1952, which is among the audiovisual UFO records held by the National Archives. What proof of the existence of aliens and UFOs might be discovered at the National Archives when additional records are searched, processed, and declassified? That will have to wait. But judging by the past, it's obvious that researchers and UFO enthusiasts will keep looking for new data. The tremendous interest in the presence of extraterrestrial life and UFOs continues to spark intense debate throughout the world. Yep. Is there a link between the rare element 115 and extraterrestrial raft? The 115th element is somewhat of a mystery. It wasn't officially recognized as a chemical element until 2016. But for decades, it has been the subject of speculation about its possible links to alien technology and civilizations. Intrigued? Let's first determine what element 115 actually is before attempting to determine whether there is a relationship. As with all elements on the periodic table, the element's number corresponds to the number of protons in the element's atom. Element 115, or Muscovium, is a man-made, super-heavy element with 115 protons in its nucleus, which is 23 more protons than the heaviest element you can find in large quantities on Earth, uranium. The rare element 115, which is created one atom at a time in particle accelerators, is only present for a very brief period of time before decaying into another element. It is special because it is close to a predicted island of stability where some super-heavy nuclei might have much longer lifetimes, instead of existing for less than a second, they might exist for minutes, days, or even years. That is long enough that we might be able to use them for practical applications. How was it created? A team of researchers led by nuclear physicist Yuri Oganesian discovered element 115 in 2003 at the Flareoff Laboratory for Nuclear Reactions in Dubna, Russia. The element was then given the name Moscovium because Dubna is a Moscow city. To successfully fuse the nuclei of a americium-243 and calcium-48 atoms, the scientists bombarded americium-243 with calcium-48 ions that had been accelerated to about 10% of the speed of light. This process resulted in four atoms of Moscovium, which is a super-heavy element that requires the complete fusion of two lighter elements. It took years for scientists to figure out some of the intricacies concerning Muscovium. I'm glad they did. <laughs> there wasn't no way I could have been able to do that job. They took them years and it took me centuries. And it wasn't until 2018 that Berkeley Lab researchers determined the element's mass or atomic weight, which is the sum of all the protons and neutrons in an atom. They produced about one atom of Muscovium per day, and that atom was captured by an instrument called Fiona for the identification of nuclide A, which to the untrained eye looks like a small metal bank vault. So far, Muscovium hasn't been used for anything other than scientific research, but they were able to nail down this crucial number by repeating the process that the first discoverers used to pin down the element. What is the alien's connection with element 115? Although element 115 wasn't formally identified until 2003, its name has been associated with extraterrestrials, flying saucers, and other paranormal topics for decades. 
We're talking about the. How y'all feel about that? Yeah, we don't even know this type of stuff is going on. See, see, that's the thing, man. When you start unveiling stuff to everyone and you start seeing, like, do y'all? How are y'all gonna feel, or how would you feel, if it does come out that they do exist, and your government has known the entire time, and have have had proof. The entire time. For me, it wouldn't surprise me. But for, I know some people would be devastated. Especially the ones who still with all of this type of stuff going on. Have just still don't believe. Not at all. How would that, how would you feel? Saucers and other paranormal topics for decades. We're talking about the long-lived tale of Robert Bob Scott Lazar, who in 1989 revealed what he claimed to be top-secret information about Element 115. NDA. Lazar claimed to be a former employee at Area 51, the well-known and highly classified section of the Nevada Test and Training Range operated by the United States Air Force, where his job was to reverse-engineer crashed alien flying saucers, an element that heavy cannot be created here on Earth. The chemical must originate from a region where naturally occurring super heavy elements are possible, according to Lazar. Mm -hmm. Nine alien spacecraft allegedly used some sort of propulsion system that harnessed the inherent power of gravity and thus utilized the characteristics of element 115 to work their technological wizardry, according to Lazar, who claimed to have seen evidence of anti-gravity propulsion technologies. The majority of his assertions have never been completely refuted, as several sources have noted, and the government doesn't acknowledge the employment of anyone who has worked at Area 51. That's Fundamental crazy. science continues to refute his That's statements, crazy. nonetheless. No, the assertions of Bob Lazar have nothing to do with this discovery, stated Gates. Presently, all the created atoms of element 115 have decayed way too fast to be used to fuel UFOs. For the people who are immersed in these advancements on a daily basis, that's more than enough. After all, Muscovium is an amazing element. Gates said that it is a sign that we're pushing the limits of what we know about the universe. So instead of the excitement about little green men and incredible spacecraft, we're left with real, tangible, and equally thrilling science. We have made over 100 atoms of element 115 and are starting to understand its nuclear and chemical properties because element 115 is unique in that we can create it more easily than some lighter elements like element 112 or element 113. Normally, as we add more protons, it gets harder to create a new element, but this trend is broken around element 115. However, 115 is suspected to have mostly rapid decay isotopes, just as the gold has 37 different isotopes and only one is stable. Therefore, hopefully in the future, we will on a version with a longer half-life, even if it only ends up being a few atoms of it. Alternatively, the aliens may simply prefer to observe life in a closed system, or they may have ethical reasons for not interfering in our technological and cultural progress, similar to the prime directive from Star Trek. A more sinister interpretation can be found in Ball's laboratory hypothesis. Because they don't see us as a threat, I don't think. I, I don't believe they do. Hypothesis. The aliens don't talk to us because we're part of an experiment they're conducting. In mm. the end, it is impossible to predict the objectives and convictions of a fictitious advanced civilization. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here... I'm still tripping on... They don't even acknowledge any of the workers that have either currently or past... Uh, uh, presently or past uh, worked for them. They they don't acknowledge any of them. That's crazy to me, man, to just think of, bro. You mean tell me I could go work for a top secret, undisclosed location, government agency, and y'all just wipe me off the map and never acknowledge me? Even if I've done groundbreaking work there? <laughs> That's just insane. Insane, man. Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section, bro, and let me know what you thought about this video and these conspiracy theories, man. It's just theories. Just theories. All right? Y'all let me know. Leave a like before you roll out. It's your boy L. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.